Hi, I'm Derek Hilton. Now my doctor told me that I had a big problem and I needed to accept it. Well, I don't know what the guy's on about. Just because I photograph and film wildlife straight after work, I have a shower and I'm straight out the bush and film on weekends and every bit of time that I can grab. I think the guy's going a bit nutsy. I see my kids every now and then. I see the wife every now and then. Yeah. I think he's got the problem, not me. Well, good morning. I'm Derek Hilton, and welcome to my office. I've just recently had it renovated. It's looking awesome at the minute. Now, we're here to talk about what's in the bag. What do I use to photograph and film wildlife? Now, I have my little travel bag. This is just for shooting out in the bush um, after work, like I do every night. And on weekends, um, I'm only five minutes away from this reserve. So I spend a lot of time in here, and this bag's good. Just chuck me DSLR in here, and the XF300. You're looking at me three right now, just chucked it on my shoulder, and I'm out here in minutes. So yeah, good little bag. Had it for five years, and there's hardly any wear and tear on it, really. It's just stained and a bit faded, that's all. This is the Lopro uh, Flipside 300. Throw for a camera with a 300 millimeter lens on it. Can you do go can go bigger though? Um, I've taken all the guts out of it, so there's plenty of room in there. Got side panel there for uh, CF cards and little pockets for bits and pieces. And the outside, you've got your water bottle carrier and got me gloves in there to keep those bloody pesky mozzies off my hands. Now, what's in the bag? That and the Canon 5D Mark II and uh, we'll talk about that a bit later on about what I used to film with these days uh, yeah, it's a reasonable good all-round camera I'll say that much for it terrible autofocus means I miss out on a hell of a lot of stuff um, just can't lock onto a bird on a branch that's uh, moving around sometimes and you miss out so that's what I use taking photographs these days and uh, now when you're photographing in the bush the chances of getting a beautiful shaft of light on your subject are about a hundred to one so you have to have a flash now, at the time I bought the 5D Mark II I could only afford a little bit underpowered sort of flash this is the 430 EX2 uh, but it, it's not too bad. Now I have to use a shutter speed in here of uh, thousandths of a second and your aperture at 11. That's the sweet spot for a, uh, any sort of zoom lens to get a good enough depth of field. Now with the flash, because of those settings, uh, the background's always a bit dark. Uh, this flash will only penetrate you get um, a bird on the branch about two meters away and it'll light it up nicely but the background will be dark so a little invention came along about a year after I bought the camera and that's a flash extender now that helps boost up the power of a uh, flash so I haven't worried about saving up for another flash over the years because this has worked really well it doesn't take long to set up yes it does because I've put the lens part away but uh, they work really well it lights up the background so that your subject stands out a lot better uh, it gives it a much more pleasant look that's for sure and I can get a a distance of about uh, three meters, no more than three meters at those sort of high settings. Now, uh, there you go, there's the flash extender. Now, it's like a, uh, a lighthouse, uh, they throw out light, it's magnified on the front part, the lens, 
and as you can see, I've broken it. Now I fell down a three meter bank, tripped down it, and saved all my camera gear, that's for sure, but uh, just caught the edge of that and it flexed and broke. That was three years ago. So that's doing really well. It is getting further and further along the crack, but uh, it's still working, so um, I'll put up with it until it completely breaks. So there you go. Now I just carry, oh, that's got a, um, that's my old lens, a 75 to 300, and so is the L lens on the Canon 5D Mark II. At the minute, uh, that's very clunky and rubbishy. That's for a, another review another day. What I use it for now is uh, close-ups. I put a close-up lens on there, and it's not too bad. Get photos of your little insects and stuff. And you can chuck lots of stuff in there, jam it up with your jumper and all sorts of bits and pieces. So that's that bag. Now, when I'm going out on a big hike somewhere, I might be out for a full day, something like that, I'll take a Lopro, Lopo Tracker 400 and uh, this is fantastic. Now this is water, reasonably waterproof, probably drizzle proof more than anything. Has got the nice um, waterproof zips. But it has a cover you can pull out from underneath and it goes over top and gives it 100% waterproofing. And that's a really good bag for long, uh, long travels or um, hiking for four days like I did la last year. Uh, October last year I went out and did a four day hike at Wilson's Prom and I made a documentary about that so you can go and have a look at it if you like after we finish here. Now uh, this, this little bum bag here that comes on the top of your low pro, clips on on the top there, uh, the uh, straps fold away inside so you can hook it back on the top but I use this all the time if I'm just going to quickly go out and just go for a wander and I don't need anything uh, I don't need to take a bag or anything uh, just grab my camera and shoot off with this on it's got my batteries in it mozzie spray whoops and a cap <laughs> lens cap for uh, the XF300 uh, just fell on the floor Headphones for the XF300 because I need it for talking and listening to what I'm crapping on about now. Uh, yeah, so that you, lens cleaning kit, old dog and bone, extra CF card just in case, a torch because uh, occasionally I get carried away and I end up in the in the dark coming home sometimes. Batteries, lots of batteries for the. Uh, 5D Mark II and the XF300 that I'm filming you with right now and we'll talk about that later as well. So that's a really good bag and I, it goes everywhere with me. Even if I've got these on, that is on me bum. So that's in that pocket. Chuck all that crap back in. Except for me cap, better remember that eh? Now, in here brush cleaning your lenses and something very important for anyone that's walking I always make sure I have them in jogger going past <laughs> now uh, a whistle very important because uh, if you fall down a mine shaft like I could do out here and I break my legs and I can't get out uh, you don't doesn't take much energy to blow the whistle to get someone's attention so you should always have one of them, just in case. A little pocket knife. Always take one of them with me, get a splinter out, or uh, pop a cork if I've uh, got a bottle of wine with me, which would be never. Now, uh, what else we got in here? That's about it. So yes, very good for counting your batteries around in your bits and pieces, just to make sure you can uh, keep going with your photography. So the bag, great size bag, and it's not the prettiest looking bag neither, it's quite a square boxy looking thing, but it does the job, it does what you need it to do, 
probably a little bit weighty at the time it came out. I think it was uh, one of the lighter bags you could get it's because, of, because of the padding and everything. It's about around five kilos from memory. And there's some newer ones out, new technology, new fabrics. They've made it a lot lighter. I think they're about three kilos. Uh, not with the Low Pro, but a different brand. So it's a great bag. You can put all your camping gear on there. It's got straps going in all directions. Tripod holder. You can shove a smaller tripod down the hole there. Or you can have it on the outside with the straps. Straps, straps, straps all over the place. It's got a water bladder built in on the side there. It's designed for it. So it's all, everything tucks away nice and neatly. That's only a, a litre ladder in there. But It'll go up to about four litre ladder you can fit in there. Now, what do I have in here? I've got the uh, Bruce, Porter Bruce waterproof cover for that camera, for the XF300. And I can still film in the rain if I want. Without too much drama. Got my LED for the light to light up my face and make myself look beautiful on an overcast day or Whatever, a oh, lens cleaner. Now, another great tool that I use for out in the scrub is snake cam. Now, snake cam's great for going into hollow logs just to check out whether there's a nest of little antichinus that I uh, do a lot of filming with at the minute. Mm, they'll nest in tree stumps and logs and uh, those sort of environments. So I like to try and uh, find them if I can where they're nesting and it's also good if you've got a, a bird's nest that's up a, too high for you to have a look inside I can just put snake cam up there and see how it's going where the eggs have hatched or whatever that's a great tool to use ND filters all sorts of ones but that's the uh, the black filter the one that you can take time lapse during the day with um, not time lapse, sorry, long exposures. With yeah, I've got all the other bits and pieces that go along with them. Uh, first aid kit, blah blah blah. Got your little pockets up the top there. With sun cream in it, and notepad and pen, and your CF cards and whatever else you want to put in there. So it's a great bag. That's really good for long trips. I said did the four day hike. Uh, it was very comfortable, and I've had this for about three years too, I think. And it's wearing very well. So there you go. That's what I have in the bags. Now let's talk about what I use for photographing and filming, and why. So what camera do I use to photograph and film with? Well, I've got two these days. Now I used to use the Canon 5D Mark II, because that's all I had. Uh, it's a good all-round camera. Uh, it's not hasn't got the best focusing system on it. Pretty crap actually. Uh, to nail a lot of the birds in flight and uh, things running around me at, fi at fast speed, uh, the focusing system on this just can't cope. So I'll get one out of ten that might be all right, or even one out of twenty might be all right. Uh, the others will be slightly out of focus. You can't use them. Now to film with. Uh, you've only got manual mode for focusing and that is an L lens and you can hear it clicking there so it comes up on the audio which is another big problem and that's with all DSLRs even the newer ones out they don't have good sound on them at all so you have to have an external uh, microphone system um, yeah so a microphone and uh, an audio system that will give you a good sound. Uh, now with this focusing uh, when you're filming you have no tools to focus with so I end up putting Magic Lantern on that helped a bit with focus peaking and the audio gain that comes with it uh, helped the speaker a little bit. I'll put a sample up and you can have a listen to the difference between this and that. Now that has fantastic sound as you're hearing right now. It's just beautiful. Crystal clear, it's really, really good speaker in it. Uh, 
February to February sees the height of the fire season in the Dandenong Ranges and then these so yeah it just doesn't compete with a, a video camera uh, there's just so many problems with it there's moray problems aliasing all sorts of problems with it and to set up to film action on the go well you're looking at 15 to 20 seconds to set yourself up get it focused get your exposure right and in this time the subject's gone might be two birds hit the ground fighting in front of you and you set up and all you get is two birds flying away so um, I have missed out on so much with this camera now the dynamic range on this is terrible the dynamic range on that is fantastic I'm in full sunlight at the minute It'd be a little bit darker behind me in spots and it just does a really good job with this doesn't um, to film myself like I am now this has got face detection I can uh, uh, quickly put this on the ground face detection grabs me and I can start talking to the camera straight away now with this I've got to focus get, get the camera in the right position make sure that the backgrounds not too bright because of the bad dynamic range uh, focus on a tree go and stand next to the tree test it uh, you know, get it going make sure and come back and have a look see whether I'm framed properly uh, exposure still okay go back start talking and think, oh, what am I supposed to be talking about you get all pissed off and angry because um, it's just taken too long and then you go and have a look at it the backgrounds all overexposed uh, the dynamic range is just gone you've got to shift again and start all over so it take me ages and I just keep getting pissed off and angry so I eventually bought the XF300 and man within seconds I'm just improving talking to the camera a lot better if you look at my earlier stuff go to my uh, channel and have a look at my earlier stuff compared with the latest stuff I've improved out of sight still talk crap that I've improved a lot better um, a lot more relaxed in front of the camera so to compete with the XF300 uh, you've got a beautiful uh, zoom lens on that it's a 1 1.6 uh, f-stop so it's a very fast lens uh, zoom of 527 and opens right up to 30 millimeters to buy um, a lens like well, a 500 millimeter lens uh, not down to 1.6 only 1.4 would cost you over three grand um, for your audio external audio system and to be mobile if you had to carry a camera around like this I just chuck it on my shoulder and I can pan around the place uh, do selfies just flip the screen around and just do selfies uh, very quickly you can't do selfies with this unless you buy an external monitor so you imagine that uh, a setup so you can hold the camera be mobile with a monitor on it follow focus external audio it's going to cost you eight grand easy on top of the camera so it's it's just dumb it's just silly to chuck money at this camera uh, a money pit really uh, beautiful dynamic range on on the XF300 well any of the other cameras doesn't have to be a Canon any camera that's built for filming will do the job a hundred times better than a DSLR now I know a lot of the new ones out now the 7D Mark II which I want to get my hands on <laughs> for its beautiful focusing system oh man it's going to take some I'm going to get fantastic shots and nail them all the time uh, photographs so I could use it as a second camera I don't have to worry about audio um, that, that'll be fine but yeah there's no comparison between the two uh, modern day ones have got auto uh, got your auto focus but really why bother if you're going to do like what I'm doing photographing and filming you need both get yourself a good camera and a good film camera all right that's enough of me carrying on if you want to subscribe click down there go and have a look at all the other things I do on uh, my other channel like making my life documentaries practice at making them anyway. Right, I'll catch you around the place. See ya.